Laudetur Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ, and welcome to all of you at the beginning of this live broadcast of the Liturgy of Palm Sunday. The Passion of the Lord, presided over by His Holiness Pope Francis here in St. Peter's Square. We've begun to hear the first strains of the antiphon for today's liturgy. As we see the procession making its way to the obelisk where the first part of the liturgy begins. A warm welcome to all of you joining us from around the world. Welcome to those of you joining us through our own Vatican media channels. Those of you joining us on our Vatican News web portal, through our Vatican radio app, our English YouTube channel or Facebook live feed. And to those of you tuning in through television, through Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks, EWTN, Salt and Light Media, at Madarshan TV, Shalom TV, and Sunday Shalom, as well as all of you joining through radio stations. We have some of you tuning in through Luminous Radio, Radio Maria Latvia, and Radio Maria Papua New Guinea, and other diocesan or shortwave radios picking up the broadcast, as well as all of you who have found us on other internet platforms. Today's liturgy begins with a procession commemorating the Lord's entrance into Jerusalem. As soon as the church gained her freedom, the faithful in Jerusalem reenacted this solemn entry of the of Christ into their city and this seems to be recorded especially in the Gospel of Matthew and in the early Latin Church those attending Mass today would hold olive twigs aloft people taking part in today's procession and with this celebration we enter solemnly into the holiest week of the church's year
today's olive uh, twigs that we see being carried come from Città dell'Olio in the Umbria region of Italy. And we'll be seeing palm trees here as well and braided palm branches. As we do with every liturgical celebration, we enter more deeply into a mystery of our Lord's life. Today, that of the Lord's entrance into Jerusalem. Catechism of the Catholic Church explains that a memorial in the liturgical sense comes to us in the scriptural sense, that this memorial is not merely the recollection of a past event, but the proclamation of the mighty works God has wrought for us. So in a liturgical celebration of an event, that event in a certain way becomes present and real. And so we now prepare our hearts to be united with the billions of Christians and the first disciples of our Lord as we welcome Christ the King, not only in Jerusalem, but into our own hearts all throughout the world. Pope Francis, as we know, was hospitalized on Wednesday for a lung infection and returned yesterday. We await his arrival now. We now see our Holy Father entering the square in the Pope Mobile. And at this point, I'd also like to welcome any of you now joining us through the worldwide television broadcast today.
Pope Francis now entering the obelisk area. For those of you who have been accompanying him with your prayers, he has expressed his gratitude. And we're happy to see him now being able to preside over this celebration of the Palm Sunday liturgy today. The concelebrant or the celebrant at the altar today, we will see him a little later, is Cardinal Leonardo Sandri, the Prefect Emeritus of the Dicastery for the Oriental Churches. Father has now reached the chair and we'll begin the liturgy today which begins with a prayer as well as the proclamation of the gospel and for those of you joining who are following in a missal we will be following the liturgy for Palm Sunday with the readings for year A. In nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. Amen. La pace sia con voi. E con il tuo Spirito. Fratelli e sorelle, fin dall'inizio della Quaresima abbiamo cominciato a preparare i nostri cuori attraverso la penitenza. Dear brethren, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole Church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say of His Passion and Resurrection, for it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. We pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him. Amen. deacon who will proclaim the gospel now having the thoroughfare filled with the incense
and the procession now moving to the ambo here before the obelisk. Il Signore sia con voi. Dal Vangelo secondo Matteo. Gloria a te, oh Signore. The Gospel we will hear proclaimed from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Quando furono vicini a Gerusalemme, e giunsero presso Betfage, verso il Monte degli Ulivi. Gesù mandò due discepoli dicendo loro, Andate nel villaggio. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass, tied, and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Il Signore ne ha bisogno, ma li rimanderà indietro subito. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. Dite alla figlia di Sion, this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of an ass. E fecero quello che aveva ordinato loro Gesù. Condussero l'asina e il puledro, misero su di essi i mantelli, ed egli vi si pose a sedere. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Mentre egli entrava in Gerusalemme, tutta la città fu presa d'agitazione e diceva: And when he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds responded, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Parola del Signore. Imitiamo, fratelli e sorelle, le folle che acclamavano Gesù e procediamo in pace. Dear brethren, like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
procession. Now continuing toward the altar accompanied by the antiphon, the children of the Hebrews carrying olive branches went to meet the Lord, crying out and saying, Hosanna in the highest. see various people here as the procession continues. About 400 people here for the procession today. Our Holy Father now back in the Pope Mobile making his way up the aisle here in St. Peter's Square heading toward the altar at the steps of the Basilica.
we now hear the choir chanting the hymn to Christ the King. Glory and honor and praise be to you, Christ, King and Redeemer, to whom young children cried out loving hosannas with joy. Israel's king you are, King David's magnificent offspring. You are the ruler who come blessed in the name of the Lord. Heavenly hosts on high unite in singing your praise. Men and women on earth and all creation join. Bearing branches of palm, Hebrews came crowding to greet you. See how with prayers and hymns we come to pay you our vows. offered gifts of praise to you so near to your passion. See how we sing this song now to you reigning on high. Those you were pleased to accept now accept our gifts of devotion, good and merciful King, lover of all that is good. Father now wearing the presider's cope, now making his way to the presider's chair here in front 
of the altar in the square. The altar bearing olive trees and large palm branches and the colonnade also decorated with greenery in the back along with the steps leading up. And we now continue with the Holy Mass beginning with the opening prayer. Riyadh. Dio onnipotente del terno, che hai dato che modello agli uomini il Cristo, tuo figlio, nostro Salvatore, fatto uomo e umiliato fino alla morte di croce. Fa che abbiamo sempre presente il grande insegnamento della sua passione per partecipare alla gloria della risurrezione. Egli è Dio e vive e regna con te nell'unità dello Spirito Santo per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. El Señor Dios me ha dado una lengua de discípulo para saber Our first reading proclaimed in Spanish from the prophet Isaiah. Cada mañana, the Lord has given me a disciple's tongue para que escuche so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. No Each morning he makes me to hear to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be put to shame. you forsaken me. Si fanno beffe di me quelli che mi vedono, storcono le labbra, scuotono il capo, si rivolga al Signore e lui lo all who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, if this is his friend. di cani mi circonda mi accerchia una banda di malfattori hanno scavato le mie mani e i miei piedi many dogs have surrounded me a band of the wicked beset me they tear holes in my hands and my feet i can count every one of my bones Sì, 
dividono le mie vesti, sulla mia tunica gettano la sorte. Ma tu, Signore, non stare lontano. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. Annuncerò il tuo nome ai miei fratelli, ti loderò in mezzo all'assemblea. Lodate il Signore voi suoi. I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him. Israel sons. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbly yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Gospel antiphon chanted by our choir, Christ was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Passione di nostro Signore Gesù Cristo, secondo Matteo. In quel tempo, Gesù comparve davanti al governo. The Passion according to Matthew. Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate, the governor, and the governor put to him this question. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Don't you hear how many charges they've brought against you? But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the gathered when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, which do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now, as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that man. I've been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the go governor spoke and asked them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Pilate asked them, But in that case, what am I to do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder. Let him be crucified. Pilato, visto che non otteneva nulla, 
Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the entire people shouted back, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort around him. They then stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak, and having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak, and dressed him in his own clothes, and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall which he tasted, but he refused to drink it. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots. And then they sat down and stayed there keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one at the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, So you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Then save yourself. If you are God's son, if you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way. They said, He 
saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we'll believe him. He puts his trust in God. Now let God rescue him, if he wants to. For he did say, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, The man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait and see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus, again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. And we pause in a moment of silence. This moment we commemorate the death of the Lord and we continue with the proclamation of the Passion. Ed ecco, il velo del tempio si squarciò in due. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, the earth quaked. The rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many of the saints rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place. And they were terrified and said,
in truth, this was the Son of God. procession of the those who proclaimed the gospel now moving away we now await our Holy Father's homily Perché mi hai abbandonato? È l'invocazione che la liturgia oggi. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the cry that today's liturgy has us repeat in the responsorial psalm, the only cry that Jesus makes from the cross in the gospel we have heard. Those words bring us to the very heart of Christ's passion. The culmination of the sufferings he endured for our salvation. Why have you abandoned me? The sufferings of Jesus were many, and whenever we listen to the account of the Passion, they pierce our hearts. They were sufferings of the body. We can think of the slaps and the beatings, the flogging and the crowning with thorns the cruelty of the crucifixion. There were also sufferings of the soul, the betrayal of Judas, the denials of Peter, the condemnation of the religious authorities, the mockery of the guards, the jeering at the foot of the cross, the rejection of many, utter failure, the abandonment of the disciples. And yet, amid all these sorrows, Jesus remained certain of one thing, the closeness of the Father. Now, however, the unthinkable has taken place. Before dying, he cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Jesus who is abandoned. This is the most searing of all sufferings, the suffering of the Spirit. At his most tragic hour, Jesus experiences abandonment by God. Prior to that moment, he never called the Father by his generic name, God. To convey the impact of this, the Gospel also reports his words in Aramaic. These are the only words of Jesus from the cross that have come down to us in the original language. The event is terribly real. It's the abandonment of his Father of God. We find it hard even to grasp what great suffering he embraced out of love for us. He sees the gates of heaven closed. He finds himself at the bitter age, the shipwreck of life, the collapse of every certainty. And he cries out, the why of whys. To you, God, why? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the Bible, the word abandon or forsake is powerful. We find it at moments of extreme pain. Love that fails or is rejected or betrayed, children who are rejected or aborted, Situations of repudiation, the lot of widows and orphans, broken marriages, forms of social exclusion, injustice and oppression, the solitude of sickness. In a word, 
In the most drastic severing of the bonds that unite us to others, it's at that moment that we that they would use the word abandonment. Christ brought all of this to the cross upon his shoulders. He bore the sins of the world. And at the supreme moment, Jesus, the only begotten beloved Son of the Father, expressed a situation completely alien to his very being, God's abandonment. And we can ask why it had to come to this, and there's only one answer. He did it for us. Brothers and sisters, today this is not a, a show. Each one of us hearing the abandonment of Jesus can ask or can say, for me, this abandonment is the price he prayed he paid for me. Si è fatto solidale con ognuno di noi fino al punto estremo. He became one of us to the very end in order to be completely and definitively one with us. He experienced abandonment in order not to leave us prey to despair. So he would be able to stay at our side forever. He did this for me, for you, because whenever you or whoever, whoever feels themselves up against a wall, who feels lost in a blind alley, plunged into the abyss of abandonment, sucked into a whirlwind of so many whys that have no response, there might be hope. Him, for you, for me. It's not the end, because Jesus was there, and now he's with you. He who suffered abandonment in order to take up into our, his love every possible distance that we can feel. Many of us have fallen many times and each one of us can say, in my failings, in my desolation, wherever I, whenever I feel betrayed or I've betrayed others, when I feel cast aside or I've cast others out, when I feel abandoned or I've abandoned others, we can think that he was abandoned and it's there that we will find him. When I feel lost and confused, when I can't take it anymore, he is with me, he's there. In the thousand in all of the, the questions, the whys that we ask, he's there with me. That is how the Lord saves us from within our why. And it's there that he opens the horizon of hope. It, does not disappoint. On the cross, even as he felt utter abandonment, Jesus refused to yield to despair. Instead, he prayed and he entrusted himself. He cried out his why in the words of the psalm, and he entrusted himself into the hands of the Father, even though he felt distant, and he feels that because he feels abandoned. In the hour of his abandonment, he entrusts himself. Even more, at the hour of abandonment, he continued to love his disciples who abandoned him, who left him alone, and he forgave those who crucified him. Here we see the abyss of our evil, immersed in a greater love, with the result that our distance becomes communion. Brothers and sisters, a love like this, embracing us completely into the very end, 
the love of Jesus like this is capable of transforming our hard hearts into hearts of flesh. It's a love capable of mercy, tenderness, and compassion. This is God's style. Closeness, compassion, and tenderness. God is like that. Christ in his abandonment stirs us to seek him and to love him in those who are themselves abandoned. For in them we see not only those who are in need, but we see Jesus himself. He's with them. Jesus who is abandoned. The one who saved us by descending to the depths of our human condition. He's with every one of them. Abandoned even to death. I'm thinking a few weeks ago about a man the German the German man who died under the colonnade of St. Peter's alone and abandoned he's Jesus for every one of us there are so many who need our closeness so many who are abandoned. And I too need that Jesus caresses me and draws near to me. And so that's why I need to go out and find him in those who are in need. And this is why he wants us to care for our brothers and sisters who resemble him the most. Those experiencing extreme suffering and solitude. Not only today, there are many Christs who are abandoned. There are entire peoples who are abandoned, left alone. Poor, the poor who live on the crossroads of our streets and we don't even have the courage to look at them. There are migrants who are no longer faces but numbers, prisoners who are disowned, people written off as problems. There are countless other Christs abandoned persons in our midst, invisible, hidden, discarded with white gloves, unborn children, the elderly who live alone, the elderly who are left alone. It could be your father, your mother, maybe your grandmother, your grandfather abandoned in um, rest homes, the sick whom no one visits, the disabled who are ignored, the young, burdened by great interior emptiness, and no one listens to their cry of pain. And they don't find any other way out than suicide. Today's abandoned, the Christs of today. Jesus, abandoned, asks us to open our eyes to those who are abandoned. And for us, as disciples of the abandoned one, no man, no one can be left to him or herself. Let us remember that the rejected and the excluded are living icons of Christ. They remind us of his crazy love, his mad love, his abandonment that delivers us from every form of loneliness and isolation. Today, let us implore this grace to love Jesus who was abandoned and to love Jesus in the abandoned, in every one who's abandoned. Let us ask for the grace to see and acknowledge the Lord who continues to cry out in them. May we not allow his voice to go unheard or in the deafening silence of indifference. God has not left us alone. Let us care then for those who feel alone and abandoned. Then and only then will we be of one mind and heart with the one who for our sake emptied himself. 
He completely emptied himself for us. Our Holy Father's homily focusing on those powerful words the only word we know through the Gospel of Matthew that he spoke on the cross that many in our world today perhaps those of you who are listening also repeating with him my God my God why have you abandoned me These words can echo through us through Holy Week. As we allow these words, we place ourselves before the mystery of Christ's own abandonment. We to remain in reflection. Along with the approximately 30 million, 30,000 people here today. And we prepare now to profess our faith with all of the disciples of Christ as we enter into this most holy of weeks.
fratelli e sorelle, seguendo Cristo sulla via della croce, brothers and sisters, as we follow Christ on the way of the cross, let us offer our prayers to the Father, trusting that He will enable us to bear the trials of life and give us confidence in Christ's paschal victory over sin and death. We pray in Polish. For the Church, born from the pierced side of Christ, that as we participate in the celebrations of Holy Week, we may obtain the grace and strength we need to follow the Lord. We pray in Portuguese. Pelos governantes das nações, para que, for those in authority, that they may persevere in seeking the common good, promoting peace, and assisting those who suffer because of violence, hatred, or war. We pray in Hindi for those suffering because of illness or poverty, that through our closeness and solidarity, their dignity and well-being may be restored. We pray in French for the catechumens preparing to receive the sacraments of Christian initiation, that in this time of grace they may follow Christ crucified and risen and become messengers of his love and mercy. And in Chinese, for all of us here at the Lord's Banquet, that we may be strengthened in the certitude that suffering and death do not have the last word, but are instead the way to the fullness of life. Heavenly Father, accept the prayers of your people as we follow your Son, the humble King of glory. May he teach us how to carry out your will. And we now move into the liturgy of the Eucharist. The offertory chant from the Book of Lamentations. O all ye that pass by the way, attend and see whether there be any sorrow like mine. Attend, all ye people, and see my sorrow, whether there be any sorrow like to my sorrow.
brought forward now. Celebrant at the altar today, Cardinal Leonardo Sandri, also the, the Vice Dean of the College of Cardinals now, sensing the altar, having offered the gifts of bread and wine, which will be transformed into the body and blood of Christ. We see the Holy Father in the presider's chair, now facing the altar. And Cardinal Sandri now sensing also the image of the crucifix here. These images help us enter into the reality that as we celebrate these mysteries, all of heaven and earth, Christ principally is present. Specifically in the mystery represented in the crucifix in his saving death. Which we're recalling specifically today with his entrance into Jerusalem and also by the phrase our Holy Father reflected on in his homily, which he spoke from the cross. Our Holy Father now being sensed, reminding us Christ is present in all of his ministers, and now we too, the body of Christ, being sensed that we might enter into this sacred mystery offering with the priest these gifts to God our Father. For those following in a missal, the Eucharistic prayer is number three. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Il Signore sia con voi. E con il tuo spirito. In alto i nostri cuori. Sono rivolti al Signore. Rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. E cosa buona e giusta. 
è veramente cosa buona e giusta nostro dovere e fonte di salvezza. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and His resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Veramente santo sei tu, o oh Padre, ed è giusto che ogni creatura ti lodi. Per mezzo del tuo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, nella potenza dello Spirito Santo, fai vivere e santifichi l'universo e continui a radunare intorno a te un popolo che dall'Oriente all'Occidente offra al tuo nome il sacrificio perfetto. Ti preghiamo umilmente, santifica e consacra con il tuo Spirito i doni che ti abbiamo presentato, perché diventino il corpo e il sangue del tuo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, che ci ha comandato di celebrare questi misteri. Egli, nella notte in cui veniva tradito, prese il pane, ti rese grazie con la benedizione, lo spezzò, lo diede ai Suoi discepoli e disse «Prendete e mangiatene tutti, questo è il mio corpo offerto in sacrificio per voi». Allo stesso modo, dopo aver cenato, prese il calice, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo diede ai Suoi discepoli e disse, «Prendete e bevetene tutti, questo è il calice del mio sangue, per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi, per tutti». Dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. Mistero della fede
celebrando il memoriale della passione redentrice del tuo figlio, della sua ammirabile risurrezione e ascensione al cielo, nell'attesa della sua venuta nella gloria, ti offriamo, o oh Padre, in rendimento di grazie, questo sacrificio vivo e santo. Guarda con amore e riconosci nell'offerta della tua Chiesa la vittima immolata per la nostra redenzione e a noi che ci nutriamo del corpo e sangue del tuo Figlio dona la pienezza dello Spirito Santo perché diventiamo in Cristo un solo corpo e un solo Spirito. Lo Spirito Santo faccia di noi un'offerta perenne a te gradita, perché possiamo ottenere il regno promesso con i tuoi eletti, con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, San Giuseppe suo Sposo, i tuoi Santi Apostoli, i gloriosi Martiri e tutti i Santi nostri intercessori presso di te. Ti preghiamo, o oh Padre, questo sacrificio della nostra riconciliazione doni pace e salvezza al mondo intero, conferma nella fede e nell'amore la tua Chiesa pellegrina sulla terra, il tuo servo e nostro Papa Francesco, l'ordine episcopale, i presbiteri, i diaconi e il popolo che tu hai redento. Ascolta la preghiera di questa famiglia che hai convocato alla tua presenza. Ricongiungi a te, Padre misericordioso, tutti i tuoi figli ovunque dispersi. Accogli nel tuo regno i nostri fratelli e sorelle defunti e tutti coloro che in pace con te hanno lasciato questo mondo. Concedi anche a noi di ritrovarci insieme a godere per sempre della Tua gloria in Cristo nostro Signore, per mezzo del quale Tu, o oh Dio, doni al mondo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo, a Te, Dio Padre Onnipotente, Nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Amen. Obediente. invited to pray the Lord's Prayer. E formati al suo divino insegnamento, osiamo dire, Pater Noster, qui es in celis, Liberaci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali, concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto della Tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni turbamento, nell'attesa che si compia la beata speranza e venga il nostro Salvatore Gesù Cristo.
Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai tuoi apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace, non guardare ai nostri peccati ma alla fede della tua Chiesa e donale unità e pace secondo la tua volontà, tu che vivi e regni nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. La pace del Signore sia sempre con voi e con il tuo Spirito. In Cristo che ci ha resi tutti fratelli con la sua croce. Christ who made us all brothers and sisters by his cross, let us now exchange the sign of peace. And we can do that with those we find ourselves around, even if we're on the road, people passing by. We can offer them Christ's peace at this moment. l'agnello di Dio, ecco colui che toglie i peccati del mondo, beati gli invitati alla cena dell'agnello. Oh, oh Signore, non sono degno di partecipare alla tua mensa, ma non sì soltanto una parola e io sarò salvato. And we too can pray, O Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
require chanting the communion antiphon. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. now gathered here in St. Peter's Square receiving our Lord in communion. This homily, he reminded us that Christ is present in those who are abandoned, and he mentioned a German man who died under the colonnade of St. Francis of St. Peter's Basilica, and that was the 25th of November last year. His name was Burkhard Scheffler. 
and in order to help us remember that it truly is a human person living and breathing and manifesting this mystery of Christ's abandonment. We recall he was a plumber originally from Germany and he came to Rome when he was about 50 years old. He was born in 1961. What we know about him is he came by train from Germany. He still had some money and lived on the streets of Rome near St. Peter's Basilica. There were quite a few people who befriended him over the years, especially those who could tell he was German, his compatriots, making sure he had what he needed. But all of that stopped during the lockdown due to COVID. What ended up happening is he became desperate. He was no longer receiving alms from the people who knew him. They were all locked at home and he threatened a passerby with a knife and that landed him in prison. He was released last year after spending two and a half years in prison and of course with his sentence also on his release came the certain expulsion back to Germany and some friends of his were helping him with the necessary paperwork and since he was no longer used to the cold temperatures outside because he had lived in prison for two years he died due to the cold temperature in Rome on November 25th last year. And Konrad Krajewski, Cardinal Krajewski, the papal almoner also spoke about Burkhard, knowing him personally. Preghiamo. O Padre che c'è And we conclude Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. And now, since it is near the time for the Angelus, our Holy Father will greet us and we will then recite the Angelus together before the conclusion of this liturgy. Dear brothers and sisters, I greet all of you people from Rome and pilgrims, especially those who have come from far away. I thank you for your participation and also for your prayers, which intensified during these past days. Thank you very much. I extend a special blessing to the Caravan of Peace that during these days departed from Italy bound for Ukraine, promoted by a variety of associations, Pope John XXIII, Folk Sif, Pro Civitate Christiana, Pax Christi, and others. Along with basic necessities, they are bringing the closeness of the people of Italy to the battered people of Ukraine, and today, they are offering olive branches, symbols of the peace of Christ. Let us unite ourselves to this gesture with our prayer, which will be more intense during the days of Holy Week. Brothers and sisters, we have begun Holy Week with this celebration. I invite all of you to live it as the tradition of the holy, faithful people of God teaches us, that is, accompanying the Lord Jesus with faith and love. Let us learn from our mother, the Virgin Mary, 
She followed her son with the closeness of her heart. She was of one soul with him, and together with him, even though not understanding everything, she abandoned herself completely to the will of God the Father. May Our Lady help us stay close to Jesus, present in the people who suffer, are cast out or abandoned. And the, may, the, may Our Lady bring us by the hand to Christ present in these people. I wish everyone a good journey toward Easter. Angelo Domi, un ciao di Maria. E concetti di Spirito Santo. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicat tui mulieri, vos et benedictus fruttu venti tui Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre, Amen. E gentilla Domini. Fia di secundum verbum tu. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicat tui mulieri, vos et benedictus fruttu venti tui Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Ed ero un caro fatto mesti. E capitali di nobis. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicta tui mulieri, vus e benedicto frutto venti tui Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Ora pro nobis, Santa di Gentris. Grazie a tu, anche su un domine, menti buon nostro si infonde, che angelo annunciante che si fili tu e incarnazione con noi. Per passione meglio se il cruce, a resurrezione e gloria in perducam. Per Cristo un domino nostro. Amen. Gloria a Patria, al Figlio, al Spirito e Santo. Si tutela che in principio e dunque sempre, e che in secolo al secolo oro. Amen. Gloria a Patria, al Figlio, al Spirito e Santo. Gloria a Patria, al Figlio e al Spirito e Santo. Si tutela che in principio e nunc e sempre, e di in secolo al secolo. Amen. Profideli vus defuntis, requiem eterna dona eis Domine. E luz e requeco a luce a te. Requiescanti in pace. Amen. Domini benedicto. Domino Hoviscum. Et un Spiritu Tuo. Inclinate Vos ad benedictionem. Respice questum Domine sui a familia Tua. Proqua Dominus Nostre, Iesus Christum, non dubitavi mani vostra di innocenzio, e cruci subire tormento. Chi vive te regna in secula seculor. Amen. Benedizio Dei Onnipotentis, Padre, et Figlio, e Spirito Santo, descenda su per vos et mani ad sempre. Amen. Ite missa est, And the last prayer of our Holy Father, Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross. Holy Father has now stood up. We could hear at times the belabored breathing of the Pope. As we know, he was treated for a bronchial related incident in uh, the Agosto Gemelli University Polyclinic here in Rome, the largest hospital in Rome. He left the hospital yesterday after being taken there on Wednesday uh, so that 
Antibiotics could be administered intravenously. And at this time, we now end the live broadcast of the celebration of the Palm Sunday Liturgy presided over by Pope Francis in St. Peter's Square. Please visit the Vatican News web portal, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter accounts where you'll find coverage of today's liturgy, as well as other Vatican and world news. You can also find information about the liturgies the Holy Father will be presiding over this week by consulting the Vatican.va web portal, and there's a, an icon for Holy Week. I'd like to thank our in-studio audio technician, Gustavo Messina, and Don Felipe Herrera, our audio coordinator, for making this broadcast possible, as well as our media partners, Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks, EWTN, Salt and Light Media, Atmadarshan TV, Shalom TV, Sunday Shalom, Luminous Radio, Radio Maria Latvia, Radio Maria Papua New Guinea, and the worldwide television broadcast who've made this broadcast possible. On behalf of Vatican Media, I wish all of you a blessed and prayerful Holy Week. Laudetur Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ.